Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You're now listening to episode 15 of The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. And if you're not accustomed to my saying by now, if you don't know me, get to know me. First and foremost, I got to shout out the team, Buffalo Fanatics. We wouldn't be able to make this thing possible without our extended team, which is the people. We rep for the people. I can't even call them fans anymore because at the end of the day, even us here at the Buffalo Fanatics are fans ourselves. So I definitely got to shout out all our subscribers on YouTube, all our peers on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. We appreciate the love and we want to continue to rep for the people. Moving on, our Buffalo Bills are 2-0, man, and it feels good so far. It's a long season. We started off other seasons in the past, in 2000 and 2003, and a couple more seasons, I believe 2008. I could be mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but we had, we've had a couple of 2-0 starts in the past, but it, this one feels a little different. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited, but I don't want to get overly excited for the start, but I'm definitely uh, happy and appreciate the start that we, we've jumped out to in this 2019 season. The, the whole feel, the whole vibe seemed different, even from preseason, going 4-0 in the preseason, something that I'm not accustomed to our team doing, even though the games don't count. It's just something that uh, us as fans are not used to seeing and coming into the season, we all look at the calendar in April, right? We all look at the calendar. We we know who we playing uh, well before because we know we already, okay, we playing the NFC East this year and we playing the AFC, AFC North. We know who we playing, but we don't know the order in which we are playing these teams until April. So when the schedule comes out, it finally comes out, and we see the teams and we see the schedule, Every fan looks at the schedule and say, hey, this game is winnable. This game is winnable. We're not going to win this game. Eh, we may win this game. I'm going to put a little asterisk. We all do that. And we've been doing that as, as Buffalo Bills fans for years. And sometimes we, we, we do that and we think there's winnable games or thing or games we should have won or should win. And we don't win. Right? So we know after that, okay, the Bills, they they didn't win this game that we all think or all thought they're supposed to win. We know the exact team that we have. We are who we who everybody thought we were. We was just trying to be optimistic as Buffalo Bills fans. But coming into this season, we do the same thing. We look at the first couple games. We got the New York Jets. We have the New York Giants. We have the Cincinnati Bengals, and it's like, hey, it's possible that we can win these first couple games. And we've came out in this 2019 season, came out against the New York Jets. We won 17-16 behind Josh Allen's heroics, behind Josh Allen's clutch ability in the fourth quarter, behind him and, and John Brown and, and Devin Singletary are running the ball and catching the rock. Josh Allen was able to throw a back shoulder pass to a John Brown that wasn't open. That was even pass interfered with uh, during that touchdown. And he was able to execute a gorgeous pass and win the game. Something that I don't think uh, Josh Allen would be able to do last year. Now I know he have game winning drives under his belt. But not to this magnitude. Not to the magnitude of being down 16-0, 16-3 headed to the fourth quarter in a hostile environment in MetLife and coming back and sealing that victory. Last year, that type of win, uh, I don't think Josh Allen would have been able to accomplish. Fast forward into this year, him able to do that, it shows the, the growth and the development of Josh Allen uh, during the offseason. And we have to congratulate uh, everyone around him. We gotta congratulate Carson Palmer's brother Jordan Palmer for 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 putting in that work to make Josh Allen uh, a better quarterback today. Now he has a long, long way to go. We've seen he missed some passes. He has a long way to go, but that ceiling is high. That ceiling is very high. Going 
back to MetLife after beating the Jets 17-16, coming back to beat the New York Giants 28-17, and he made some amazing throws. Again, he made some throws that he should have made. He missed some throws that he should have made. The deep pass to John Brown, the slant to Zay Jones. He should. You have to make those throws. But some throws on the run in the first half to, uh, to Dawson Knox in between two defenders to set up a touchdown drive. Uh, a third and six in the fourth quarter, fourth quarter where we needed this third down conversion. Otherwise, we would have had to punt and the New York Giants would could have got the ball back down a touchdown. Third and six, the ankle breaker on the defensive lineman and able to complete the pass to John Brown. Those type of throws are... Are wow throws and those type of throws not a lot of NFL quarterbacks can make and we're we're happy that we have Josh Allen right about now and we happy that he's he's developing and he's improving. We're talking about the first two games of the season. Uh, Josh Allen is now forty three of sixty seven, five hundred and seven yards on pace for a four thousand yard season. Five hundred seven yards through two games, in sixteen games that's four thousand yards. We'll see how that go. Uh, two touchdowns, two interceptions. His two interceptions was was kind of fluky. Now, don't get me wrong. It might even out. It, it probably should even out. Josh Allen probably should have two interceptions regardless. He had an interception called back because of a rough in the passer against the Jets, right? And then he had an inter- interception that was dropped uh, on, uh, in the end zone or on the one-yard line by Marcus May, the defensive back of the New York Jets, which which was the reason why we was able to get a field goal in the first place. So it probably balances out with his two interceptions that was fluky. And then he have two rushing touchdowns. Uh, we definitely see a lot of improvement from Josh Allen. We've seen it in the Jets game. We've seen it yesterday. And we like uh, the progression that we are seen from Josh Allen. And that progression is also because of the talents that have that's around this team. I have to really commend the Buffalo Bills scouting department. I really have to commend Brandon Bean, the GM, because we're we're signing a lot of guys made their mistakes, but we're signing a lot of guys that's that's uh, uh, immensely improved this team. The Mitch Morse concussions and all. We was all concerned about Mitch Morse. Heading into the season, he didn't play a preseason game. He he had a he was in concussion protocol since a practice, and we was all worried because he have his fourth concussion. and And how would he be uh, coming back from this injury? and And is Mitch Morse uh, career in jeopardy because of these concussions? Us as fans, we was all worried. But he came out ever since the New York Jet game and again New York Giant game, and he's shown that he's worth. Every penny. Now you can you can come in the comment section and tell me how y'all feel about Mitch Morse if y'all agree or disagree. But Mitch Morse is worth every penny that our Buffalo Bills organization have paid him. And then I, the reports was when we signed him is that he's a hell of a pass blocker and he's shown that he's a pretty damn good pass blocker. But he's also shown that I'm really surprised is is how athletic he is. In the run game, we're talking about a center that has to snap the ball and we asking him to pull. And not only is he snapping the ball and pulling, he's he's making uh, great blocks and springing open a lot of running lanes. And his athletic ability as a center just jumps off the screen. So I got to shout out Mitch Morse and, and, and Ty Naseki. Ty Naseki, he had a penalty in the last game of the New York Giants. And, but... Uh, Ty Naseki has been uh, a breath of fresh air at the tackle position. I like Cody Ford. I think Cody Ford is going to be a, a very good player in this league. But right now, uh, Ty and, and, and Naseki is, to me, in my opinion, y'all could agree to disagree once again in the comments. He's uh, head and shoulders above Cody Ford right now. And I know we have a rotational thing going on. Uh, the coaching staff would tell you, Sean McDermott would tell you, it's team base and specific base, uh, specific matchup base. But I would go ahead and, and definitely play Ty Naseki more uh, going forward because through the first two games, he provides some stability during within our offensive line. Even when he went out, 
uh, against the New York Giants. He walked up uh, under his own power and he was able to come back in the game. But he got hurt for a little stint in that Giants game. And ever since he got hurt in that Giants game, uh, with the combination of, I think, of us taking the gas off the brakes of the pedal a little bit and us calling conservative calls, I think our offensive changed a little bit. We got a little stagnant. But Titan and Seki, uh, Mitch Morse, they have been uh, integral parts to our offensive line, and they've they've improved our offensive line uh, and greatly, in my opinion. We're not a great offensive line. Quentin Spann is is not bad, but he's not great. Uh, Deion Dawkins is uh, I know Deion Dawkins is a captain. I know Deion Dawkins. You're already snow, but Deion Dawkins look like uh, the 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 worst. The worst lineman out the bunch so far during the first two games. He's not doing bad, but when you go back and you see him, you see him on film, he's he's looked a little shaky. We're gonna we're gonna hope that Deion Dawkins, of course, progress as the season go along. And I definitely have faith in that offensive line. But the 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 guys that we was able to accumulate in the off season, even even our draft picks, uh, Harbaugh, Harry Phillips, Harrison Phillips, he's been playing. Uh, uh, great ball through the, during the first two games to the point where Star Latoule is now looking like uh, a very expensive uh, backup defensive tackle. I know he's not necessarily a backup per se. He's the starter. He's the first name on the depth chart. But Harrison Phillips is definitely out uh, out snapping him to this point. But even both acquisitions are are good acquisitions. Uh, Daryl Johnson has been a breath of fresh air. We're able to send. Uh, a wave of offense of defensive linemen, eight deep among the defensive line. While none of us are uh, on the defensive line is elite, uh, there's no considerable drop off in that defensive front, and because of that, uh, the Buffalo Bills defense can remain fresh and remain stingy. Cyron Neal has has played a remarkable game. It looks like he he got thrown in in the fire against the Jets. Probably caught a little off guard against the Jets. He let up that that two point conversion that was lofted up to Le'Veon Bell. He he let up some deep pass plays, but the coaching staff look like they're doing a great job coaching and great job coaching up the guys and making up adjustments. Cyron Neal has shown that he's a very very aggressive, athletic football player, and he played a hell of a game. I now value. Before it was like, hey, why are we trading for all these fifth round picks when we didn't know Sean McDermott and we didn't know Brand, uh, Brandon Bean and we didn't know uh, these new guys that was leading our charge in the organization and we was picking up all the draft picks. It was like, damn, why are we picking up all these draft picks? Why are we picking up all these fifth round picks and sixth round picks? These guys don't make the team. This is not necessary. But when you look back now, at the, the mid to late round picks in, in Harrison Phillips. And you look at uh, a Cyron Neal. And you look at a Tyron Johnson. And you look at a, 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 a Daryl Johnson. And a Devin Singletary. And a Tommy Sweeney. You look at these guys and it's now word. We traded a Russell Bordine for six, a six round pick. This six round pick can be something. I now value our late round picks, and that goes to the uh, that goes to the the great job of Brandon Bean and that staff and that scouting department of being able to recognize talent. And I have to congratulate what they're able to do. And because of that, our Buffalo Bills again we don't have no elite superstars. I think we have some on the rise in Josh Allen and Tremaine Edmonds and guys of that nature. Well, we don't have no elite superstars at this very moment, but I believe that we have a, a complete team that can send a wave of guys, rotate a wave of guys offensively and defensively without having a considerable drop off. And I think that's why we're able to excel the way we're excelling thus far in this 2019 season. Uh, John Brown, uh, Cole Beasley, for, through the first two games, uh, John Brown, 14 receptions, 195 yards, and a touchdown. Cole Beasley, nine receptions, 123 yards. Uh, these two guys have been a vital part to Josh Allen and his progression and his development as a quarterback. 
uh, combined, they have 23 receptions for 318 yards. The rest of the team have 20, 20 receptions for 189 yards and a TD. So we see where Josh Allen feels more comfortable thus far in the first two games of the season. Devin Singletary has been a breath, a breath of fresh air with 10 attempts, 127 yards and a touchdown with five receptions and 28 yards. I know a lot of people are saying, why aren't we giving Devin Singletary more touches? Why aren't we feeding the ball to Devin Singletary a lot more? I love how we're using Devin Singletary. Frank Gore understands the NFL, he understands the pace, he understands the speed. We have a Hall of Fame veteran who's not fast, who's not af- uh, incredibly athletic or gifted, but he understands the game and he's going to hit the hole and he's going to hit the hole with power. We've seen how he hit the hole with power on a couple of first down plays. We've seen how he hit the uh, hole with power on his touchdown when he laid the linebacker flat on his ass. But a lot of people will wonder why we're not giving Devin Singletary the touches. We're talking about a guy in Devin Singletary that took a lot of a, a, a lot of pounding in Florida Athletic. We're talking about a guy that that is not accustomed yet and who's really now starting to get adjusted to the NFL speed and the NFL physicality. And we also got to take into account that the college game is more of a shortened season. The NFL is more like a marathon, a very long marathon, while the college football season compared to the NFL is is a sprint. So we're doing an excellent job in manage, managing Devin Singletary's carries thus far so we can have him fresh for the long haul and the duration of the season. We don't want Devin Singletary to hit a wall. Uh, and it is definitely possible playing uh, in the NFL, in your first year, to hit a wall. So I, I, I really like how the coaching staff is using them, and I really like what the coaching staff overall is doing uh, with this team. It really looks like we're we're making the adjustments based on the team we're playing that week, and the coaching staff definitely have to get some type of praise for that. I really like what uh, Big Dermot and and Sean. And uh, Brian Dable and Leslie Frazier is doing. As we notice, y'all notice on the defensive side of the ball, the first year we ran a lot of zone. We ran a lot of zone our first year with Leslie Frazier as the defensive coordinator. We look like now the first two games, we're disguising our fronts a lot more than I ever seen Leslie Frazier. And I've been following Leslie Frazier a long time since he was a, a head coach for the Minnesota Vikings. He usually plays a straight up. Cover two defense. That's what I'm accustomed to seeing from Leslie Frazier. Straight up, predictable cover two defense. You know he's playing cover two. You know where the defensive line is. You know where the linebackers are. You know where the safeties are. Coming out to coming out this season, we're we're lining guys up different places. We're blitzing a lot more than we we're accustomed to blitzing, and we're playing a lot more man than we're when than we're, we've been playing in the past. Excuse me and. Because of that, I think our defense overall is playing better. At the same time, uh, we may be exposing some guys a little bit. Notice when we was playing a lot of zone in the first year, Trey Wright looked like a bona fide number one corner when we was playing that basic zone type of defense. Trey Wright is getting exposed a little bit. He struggled a little bit in that Giants game. Um, because we're playing a lot more man and we're playing a lot more matchups. So he's being exposed a little bit. But overall, defensively, I really like what we're doing on that side of the ball. I love what we're doing <clears throat> on the offensive side of the ball. And now we're just going to have to keep it going. Devin Singletary, he had a little hamstring in, uh, injury uh, late in the fourth quarter. We hope he's going to be okay and he's going to be able to provide a spark against our next opponent in our home field, the Cincinnati Bengals. The Cincinnati Bengals is, is 0-2 to start their season. We are 2-0 to start our season. We cannot let up now. We have to take advantage of these opportunities. These are another one of them games where we look at the schedule and we look at Cincinnati at home. Um, and we say this is a game we have to have. This is the this is a team that we're supposed to beat. And for us to do that, we're going to have to continue 
to to progress as a unit. We're going to have to Josh Allen's going to have to continue his development as a as a franchise quarterback. Now, there's a lot of pundits out there that were saying Josh Allen couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. There's a lot of pundits out there that were saying that Josh Allen you can never teach accuracy. But through the first two games, he, he looked as accurate as as ever. We're talking about a guy that's had trouble making simple throws and simple passes and simple completions. He's making throws on the run. He's making throws on the move. He's he's not staring down one receiver. He's scanning the field and finding receivers. He's hitting guys in between the numbers. And Josh Allen is is the the head honcho of this offense, and he's going to be the reason why or the reason why not. Why we won't take the next step forward. But our offense is doing something that we're, we're not accustomed to seeing. Especially last year. And that's sustaining drives. I believe if I'm not mistaken against the New York Giants. We had a 98 yard drive. That was capped off with a touchdown. Uh, shout out the revamped offensive line. Uh, Josh Allen got was able to stand in the pocket in his own end zone. Stand up strong and firm in the pocket for a few seconds well. And make some accurate throws. So I really like the progression thus far of our Buffalo Bills team. And, and I'm excited for for things to come. And, and us here at the Buffalo Fanatics... Uh, we're going to continue to, to back our team, to back our quarterback, to back our defense. And we're going to hope that we continue to do amazing things. But let me know how y'all feel about our team, Buffalo Bills. Let me know how you feel about the offense through the first two weeks. Let me know how you feel about the defense during, during the first two weeks. Let me know how you feel about Brandon Bean and, and his and his. Uh, progression as a GM and, and Sean McDermott progression as a head coach. We're finding a lot of diamonds in the rough with Levi Wallace undrafted, with Robert Foster undrafted, with late round picks and mid round picks like uh, Harrison Phillips and Teron Johnson and Daryl Johnson and Tommy Sweeney and Dawson Knox. All these guys are contributing and that is the reason we have our 2-0 start. And right now, it's it's a good day to be a Buffalo Bills fan. We have a long way to go. We have a long way. It's nowhere by far over and, and by no stretch of the imagination. But it's definitely good and refreshing to watch coming from uh, our Buffalo Bills organization. This is A. Rich, Akeem Richens. You listen to EP15 of The Blueprint. And we'll talk next week. And hopefully, I'll be talking as our Buffalo Bills are going 3-0. and And we can head into New England as an undefeated team and really test where we at as a unit. Until next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.